Police watch houses in Queensland will be declared official youth prisons under extraordinary new laws introduced by the state government. The shock move comes as the government admits the state's existing youth detention centres are reaching capacity. For more, let's bring in criminologist and former police officer Dr Terry Goldsworthy on the Gold Coast. Good morning to you, Terry. First of all, can you talk us through this proposal? How would these pop-up youth prisons work? Well, essentially what the government is proposing is uh, overriding its own Human Rights Act and uh, that act contains provisions which says that children must be segregated from adults uh, when detained and detained in an appropriate atmosphere. Uh, so what they've done is uh, the police minister yesterday amongst uh, many uh, pages of legislative reforms included one which included a overriding declaration where they're going to override their own Human Rights Act and allow mm -hmm. children to be detained indefinitely in police watch houses. Well, what... And this will continue to 2027. Well, one of the issues, obviously, is the fact that this didn't have to go before the parliament because of the way they've done it. But you raise those human rights issues. We've heard, for instance, about one case where a teenage girl was in one of these watch houses with adult men. How much of a concern are, is this? Look, it's very concerning. It goes against the actual policy the police have in place for their watch houses. Uh, and, you know, I spent some time in watch houses in my junior service and they're not designed for long-term stays. They, uh, it's difficult to fully segregate people within watch houses. Mm. Um, there's no exercise facilities, no exercise yard, there's no natural light and there's no, in most of them, there's no visiting facilities. So. Mm. Uh, it's going to be quite traumatic to put a young person in there for any extended point of time. And I would expect, uh, I think the police union would be uh, against this move, placing their members in an invidious position of looking after vulnerable youth mm. offenders uh, who are high risk at any point in time in a detention in terms of self-harm, etc. Terry, the, the government's got to do something, though. The community is crying out for action. People are scared to be in their homes. We saw victims of crime marching on state parliament yesterday. Is this the appropriate response? No, I don't think it is. I think uh, what we've seen here is um, a lack of strategic planning by this government in terms of uh, making sure they could deal with the crisis that was making a crisis of their own making. Mm. Um, I think they'd be better placed looking to the adult prisons and actually setting aside an entire wing, etc., for the juveniles where they can be clearly segregated from the adult offenders and they've got access to things such as visiting facilities, exercise yards and appropriate uh, you know, rehabilitation uh, programs. They're not going to access any of that in watch houses. I think it's a retrograde move, to be honest. Is there any other issue that you would like to see the government adopt to address this crisis? Well, look, I think, uh, you know, I've put out the issue of mandatory minimum sentences. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General wasn't interested in that. Um, we still have a government that has a offender-centric viewpoint. And I think yesterday was a, uh, a, a example that the community is sick of the offender being the sole focus in these matters mm -hmm. and that the victims now want to be heard and we want to see some uh, action taken that will actually bite into the offending cycle, short-term offending cycle of these hardcore offenders. All right, Dr Terry Goldsworthy, thank you for your time. Carl. Maybe send them out to the bush, work the land for a while, give them some direction. Welcome back. Queensland's youth crime crisis is in the spotlight this morning as the state government introduces some controversial changes which will allow police watch houses and adult prisons to be used as youth detention centres. This decision comes as other youth detention centres near full capacity. Joining us to discuss today's headlines is Liberal Senator Jane Hume and 4BC presenter Sophie Formica. Sophie, we'll start with you. Is this the answer to the problem that is facing Queensland? Look, I think had something had to be done, an announcement needed to be made. We know that when it comes to youth offenders, the current laws state that they should stay in a police watch house until there is somewhere to move them to as quick as, as possible, as practical as possible. But as you said, Jane, a lot of the youth detention centres are at capacity, if not at capacity, and the ones that are being built aren't ready to go. So they had to be seen to be doing something. It's one of those situations at the moment where we're demanding more from the government and then as soon as they do something, mm. you'll always have a group of people who'll complain about that as well. 
It's not an ideal scenario, but the reality is that resi care isn't working. And a lot of these kids, particularly the ones who are the re-offenders, were finding themselves in residential care, less than ideal there as well, not really supervised. And allegedly, we know one of those offenders uh, is now up on one of the charges that you spoke about, the people who have lost mm. their lives to, to a young re-offender. And so something needed to change. What happened yesterday was really extraordinary. In three short weeks, they were able to get this rally up where hundreds of people marched on Parliament. If it had been on a weekend, it would have been tens of thousands. They did it yesterday because they had to do it on a sitting day. They wanted to take the submission to the ministers to speak to them about the changes that they'd like to see. And, and Jane, I'd be really interested to hear from you. I know it might seem naive, but a lot of the conversation that we're having on Talkback Radio is that the, the community would like this to be a, a multi-party approach. They're sick of it being politicised. They want everybody to come to the table. They want to see plans put in place and they want to see those plans beyond an election cycle. Mm. It's really easy for the opposition to get up in this case and beat their chest and say, no, this isn't good enough. But no one's really coming up with what the solution would be if they were the ones that were the decision makers. So I think the community's beyond it being political and now saying, what are you going to do to keep the community safe? These kids have been failed by their parents and now they've been failed by society because many of them have done the wrong thing in the past and never really faced a consequence. Mm. We know there's a small cohort of re-offenders. So what are we going to do to get them, take them out of society, look at rehabilitating them and making a decision as to whether or not they can come back into the community? Jane, it does feel like this is a situation where the community is leading the politicians to the answer. Is it time for both sides to sit down, work together and put this plan in place? Well, I think that David Christofoli has been right when he says that, uh, you know, the government really has let down this generation. If you water down the laws, if you take fewer poli more police off the streets, well, then you're going to create an entire generation of untouchables that believe that their rights, in fact, know that their rights are greater than the rights of their victims. Finally, now, the victims are speaking out and they've come out in droves. But clearly, this very tired Palaszczuk government has stopped listening. Now, uh, quite frankly, the idea that they have put these changes into the parliament without scrutiny, I think, is something that should be of great concern. We want to work together with governments and oppositions want to work together every step of the way, but if you're going to jam through your legislation without scrutiny, what sort of sign, what sort of signal is that that you want to genuinely find a solution? Of course the opposition in Queensland want to, 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 to stop the youth crime, want to reverse this generation that has really, that has been failed by government, but they need to do that with the government. The government needs to reach out and, and not say that it's got all the answers uh, and try and sort of jam through mm. these brand new ideas, which are quite controversial, let's face it, without mm. scrutiny. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my <laughs> Carl. Hey, thanks for watching our <laughs> YouTube channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?